Today we're going to make a really easy chicken stock. Um, I like to keep the flavor neutral uh, without any additional salt because I like to freeze small containers so I can defrost as little or as much as I need for soups and pasta sauce or other sauces like chicken pot pie. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. So I've got um, chicken bones and carcasses. Um, I like to buy the whole chicken um, and debone it. I'll show you how to do that up there. Um, and then I can either, if I'm doing a number of them, then I'll make stock that day or I can make it in small batches. So I've got my chicken bones and I'm gonna go ahead and put that in my pot. Ooh, this is from two uh, chickens, by the way. I always use kind of like my big three. I've got carrots, celery, and onions. I don't peel my carrots. I do just make sure that they're very clean. Um, and then it doesn't really matter how you, um, you know, slice them. I just use, you know, kind of smaller chunks. You can also use, this is a great way to use up the tops of like leeks, things like that. Just be careful that um, it doesn't overpower your stock by using too much. So now I've got my carrots. I'm gonna put those in my pot. Um, and then I also have my celery. Um, just wash it, you don't need to trim it or anything. Just make sure it's washed. Uh, and then go ahead and just slice it up. You can also just use the tops, the little um, kind of the inside pieces that you're like, what am I supposed to do with this? Even though I think they're really tasty. Um, you can just put all of that in here. No need to stress about that. And then um, I like to go ahead and cut my onions in like a, just a really kind of basic way. Um, go ahead and cut those in half. Uh, and then just peel the, the onion skin off. Uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead and take them and cut them in chunks. Uh, it's really not important how they are cut. This is not, you know, your finished dish. They're going to be strained out and placed in the garbage. So, doesn't matter. Sorry, little guys. You're here for the flavor. In they go. That's it. I'm going to cover this with cold water. And then I'm going to simmer it. I like to simmer it at least 12 hours. So I usually I'll make it in the morning or I'll make it at night and let it simmer overnight. Don't tell anyone. Um, obviously that's not safe. So you can see it's just, just covered with water and I'm just going to turn the burner on kind of in, like a medium low and let it simmer and kind of gradually come up to temperature. So you can see it's simmering, it's beautifully bubbling, it's happy in there. Um, you just want to kind of monitor the temperature and make sure it doesn't get too aggressively boily or um, too low where it's not really doing anything, it's just sitting. Um, so just kind of maintain the temperature and at least and keep cooking it at least six to eight hours. And we're back. So my stock has been simmering about, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say like 16 hours. Not totally by choice, but I didn't have time to film it last night. Normally I would just strain it super late, um, but obviously you couldn't see then. So here we are now. Before we, before we strain, I want to chit chat briefly about three things that are going to keep your stock beautiful and non-cloudy and rich and unctuous. Um, and the first is not letting it aggressively boil. You might be tempted to just like power through the stock and like have it ripping, roaring, roaring in a boil over there and like being like, and I'm done. Ooh, she said eight hours and it's been one. Go me. No, the boiling sometimes will aggressively bring out maybe characteristics of the, the bones, the chicken, um, and the vegetables that you don't necessarily want. Like you don't want your vegetables to start to break down but you do want to gently bring out that marrow and the gelatin and everything that's in there, which brings me to number two, which is um, time. You want to gently simmer for a long time, and that is how you get a nice, rich broth. It's not watery um, or sad. When it's cold, it's gonna like wiggle and almost like jello, and you're gonna be like, ew, but don't be like ew, be like, that's a beautiful stock. And then the last part, of our three-step thing here to keep it beautiful is the straining process which brings us to what we're doing now so um, I am going to strain it through a chinois we've talked about these before super versatile um, it's also like a very 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 fine mesh sieve so um, it's gonna strain out all the bits of everything in here that I do not want um, if you do not have a chinois you're gonna want a large bowl and a sieve that fits inside. You can use a smaller sieve, just be aware that like things are gonna fall into it and you need something to hold that. And then you have your cheesecloth, okay? You're gonna wanna unfold it. I want it doubled, which means that you need to unfold your cheesecloth. So obviously you would cut this 
this is like I could wear this as a dress. Um, but that's the idea. You want it double, double fold, and then you want to just like press it in there. Anyway, so we're not going to use this. We're going to use this setup because it's easier, and I will show you why. But I'm going to set this aside. Um, and then the first thing I'm going to do is actually take out some of the big pieces because otherwise you're going to plop and splatter as you put it in there. Now you can also make the same stock with already roasted chicken bones if you are not into cutting your own chicken. But your stock won't be quite as rich. Um, it will also be darker uh, because of that the roasted bones give it a kind of a color. Once I've gotten a lot of the big pieces out, I will kind of just press this and then I'm going to feel like I'm okay and I'm going to throw it out. And then I'm going to carefully pour. Look at that beautiful, rich broth. Look at that broth. Now, if you cook it less time, it will be more yellow, like a kind of what you are probably used to seeing. This looks more like a roasted chicken stock because it cooked so long. Um, you can actually see there's like browned bits on the bottom um, because of its overnight stay on my countertop or on my stove. One of the other beautiful things about this container is that it's easy to pour from. Have you ever poured stock from a bowl? I have, it sucks. It gets everywhere. Half of it goes down the drain and you're like, no, my stock, I took forever making you. So we're just going to then use this container to transfer into our other containers. Um, because I do like to make a lot of stock and then freeze it in smaller containers. Um, just make sure you leave enough space for it to expand. Um, but see, I'll show you. It's very easy to pour from this container without any sort of spillage or any sort of anything going awry, if you will. So just go ahead and give that a pour. So technically this is done. It's great. It's amazing. Um, this would be a beautiful, just honestly meal, um, super healthy, anyways. Uh, but if you, do you see how it's separated and there's a bit of fat on the top of it? Um, if that bothers you or you don't want that in your finished dish or whatever, then you can strain it out with a ladle. Um, I find this easier to do in the large batch. You can also do it off of the top of your stock. So all you do with the ladle is you're gonna push that down um, and you're gonna kind of let the, the fat kind of pool into your ladle. You can see visually there's a difference between the fat and the, um, the broth, but you will get a little bit of the broth in your, in your discard um, if you do decide to strain your stock. So now you've made chicken stock. Super easy. Um, it's in, already in its beautiful containers and we're just gonna we can cool this down and then we'll freeze it um, and we'll thaw it or defrost it as we need it. Or I also, I used it about a pint of it in my um, roasted lemon chicken. So, you know, like if you want to freeze it in smaller containers, whatever you use, that's what you should do. All right, and now you've made chicken stock.